from today all the way up until December the 18th, I'm going to be on the same subject. And I will admit to you that I am deeply concerned about what I see happening in the apostolic movement. This is, this blog, this sessions up until December 18th, is part of a multifaceted attempt to help people who are caught in the waves of confusion in the apostolic movement. So I think you'll enjoy it. More than that, I think we need it. If you have any questions while you are viewing or listening to or both this particular set of teachings, don't hesitate to write or call or whatever you can do to get in touch with us, touch base with the blog. We'll do our best to answer you. Let us know what you think and enjoy. God bless you. Lists of things that are off limits. Why? Is God trying to keep us from some good thing? No. God's trying to keep that which is sacred and set apart with honor to be used for his glory from being used for the common, mean, not mean like angry, but mean like common, mean things of this world because ye are a chosen people. When it says you're a peculiar people, it doesn't mean you're odd, peculiar in the um, older English of the King James Version comes from the word pecuniary, which means money. And money means movable treasure. In other words, ye are God's Movable treasure. Why are we movable? Because we're alive. And so he moves us about. We are his witness in the earth. So that's what it means when it says you're a peculiar people. We are a movable treasure. We're not real estate. Like you can't move, you know, five acres of land. But we are a movable treasure. That's what money is, is a movable treasure that can be used. So we're used for his glory. We're set apart for use for his glory and for no other reason. This is the idea behind holiness, which is separation unto that which is holy. And this is why the Bible makes simple statements, both Old and New Testaments, Old and New Testament, like, be ye holy, for I am holy. In other words, you are manifesting what I am, and I am magnificent and majestic and above all that is common, and therefore you manifest me by being magnificent, mag majestic, and set apart from all that is common. This is the basis of holiness. This is the basis of separation. And this is the basis of purity. You could never use a vessel that was going to be used in the temple if you used it in the outhouse. Vessels for the temple had to be kept for honorable uses. This is why Paul says there were vessels unto honor and vessels unto dishonor. And you and I, as the people of God, are vessels unto honor. Think about that. This is why it's the highest calling on earth and the highest privilege that any human being could ever, be, ever have to be a child of God, such as you and I are privileged to be. And we ought to praise him for that opportunity every day of our lives. And I'm sure that you are thankful for that opportunity. So... This is, now, now, this is a love affair. Remember when we said God is invisible, but he, he desires to express himself visibly? 
Well, this desire that he has to express himself visibly is because he is love. Remember, we said love goes out from itself. Like if you love somebody, you want to be with them. You want to go to them. You want to protect them. You want to send your love to them. You want to express. Express means to go out from yourself. So this is what God was doing. He wanted to love the world and have the world love him in return. So God goes out from himself and loves us, and we love him in turn. Out of that, a covenant relationship is formed between God and his people, both Old Testament and New Testament. This covenant relationship is formed. Marriage, a man and a woman getting married, is meant by God, among other things, as an expression of God's love for his people and his people's love for God. And that relationship of love, all of this expression of us being the visible expression of the invisible God, all this I've been talking about, is based upon a love relationship between you and the Lord and between me and the Lord. And so the church collectively and each of us as individual believers love him. Part of that covenant relationship is is we don't give ourselves to other lovers just like marriage. So in marriage it's called infidelity if a person is not faithful to the marriage vows goes out with somebody besides their husband or wife respectively they are committing an infidelity do you know what that means fidelity means faith infidelity means without faithfulness and so in marriage that's a no-no because you took vows. You made a covenant. That's why you want to be sure and have the right one. Because if you didn't, they are the right one from that point forward. You're just going to have to pray for God's grace to help you. And he will. But in God, it's the same thing. God chose us. We accepted. He is now in covenant relationship with you and I, and it is a covenant of love. And so there are certain covenant agreements in that relationship. Those covenant agreements hold us in that relationship. For example, when a woman marries a man and a man marries a woman, they agree to be faithful to one another. So with God, you and I agree to be faithful to him. And he, in turn, agrees to be faithful to us. That can be violated, but there is a certain bond of love that is put together there. And that, that covenant relationship between the two is held because they are in bonds of love. There are bonds that hold that relationship together. All right, this is Friday, December the 11th, and so we won't have uh, new stuff on the blog Saturday and Sunday, but we'll be back on Monday the 13th. So we look forward to joining us then. We don't want you to miss any. We want you to talk to us and tell us what you think and pray for us and pray for the apostolic movement that God will continue to give us direction because I believe out of crises comes outstanding potential, opportunity, and revival.